Everything is fueled from me wanting to be a better person on earth. It's time to do your part. Oh, all my loyal listeners and followers and viewers, thank you. We love you so much. Thanks for joining us yet again. Janisha Adams Guignard is with us. And um, you can really Google her and find a lot about her just online alone. But I have you in house and we're going to hear about you. Woohoo! How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. It's funny because, you know, during COVID, <laughs> you know, we're all so lazy. I haven't been shaving, but you look like oh. you, you look fantastic. <laughs> You know, I try to do what I can do, and I can do it. You look fresh, <laughs> fresh, fresh, fresh. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, because I love you. Oh, you're so sweet. I love you, too. Yeah. And we got more work to do. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right, so I actually, I usually always ask guests this, this question, and my first question to you is, when I asked you to come chat with me, why were you so uh, quick to say yes? Why are you here? I am here because, one, I value the spaces that I'm in, and I like you. Yes. So I appreciate you. I appreciate uh, the platform. Mm -hmm. And I believe that um, the words that I say give direction to those who hear. Mm -hmm. And so I was very appreciative for you reaching out to me mm -hmm. for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's as I continue to get to know you, you know, we're all unique. We all have interesting stories, but your story is so unique. <laughs> and the way you kind of... Um, the way you aggress life is so cool. You you really do. Yeah, I because just no is not an option for me, uh -huh. and I'm very blunt. Mm -hmm. You know, some people can't handle it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I consider myself an acquired taste. If you don't like it, then acquire some taste. You know what I mean? That's basically how I feel. Because, That's funny. Because I ain't got time to be wasting time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I take life like what. I'm I'm directing this. Uh -huh. I am operating my boat. I'm beating my own drum. Uh -huh. You know, no one has to lay out the path of my success. I can do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And there's so much to be said for that. Let me ask you this. Has this always been part of who you are? Or at, at what change in your life did you say, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is my new attitude. It's been instilled in me since birth. Gotcha. My mom was very adamant, very militant. Mm -hmm strong black woman mm -hmm. and i grew up with confidence i mm -hmm. it was instilled in me to be confident mm -hmm. to you know not accept no yeah. like you put your stuff into the universe mm -hmm. positive affirmations mm -hmm. um, education was highly stressed you know my mom really stressed no excuses mm -hmm. there's no excuses wow you know and yeah. so i just grew up that way yeah yeah uh thank god for your mom because yeah. that's parenting <laughs> yes exactly it's that's parenting molding. right yeah and this this generation now it's like parents feel like they got to be your friend yeah yeah like that's a deal breaker that all day yeah i mean and yeah no. and we're seeing and we're seeing the effects of that exactly you know? kids people don't know how to respect each other anymore no. you know where uh you, you see these these scenes of like people sitting on in, in, in seats on buses and letting an old woman stand next exactly. to them exactly simple things so tell me this you mentioned your mom give us take some time to tell us a bit about like your upbringing where you're from give us your backstory okay so i am from i'm just saying like I'm going to just say Los Angeles County, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm from Los Angeles County. Mm -hmm. I went to elementary school in Linwood, Mark oh. Twain Elementary. <laughs> and then I went to middle school in Paramount. Uh -huh. I went to high school in Cerritos. And I went to college in Berkeley. Go Bears, UC Berkeley, Pac-10, not WAC-12. Um, so it... <laughs> Go Bears! I love it. So, so uh, I mean, that's basically, like, as far as academic portion of mm -hmm. my life where mm -hmm. I kind of grew up and am from but um did you, was you did you have your mom and your dad it was it just, like just my mom gotcha but praise God that my mom was had a very good job she uh -huh. was a senior accountant for a very big uh, corporation mm -hmm. so um, I'm sure I'd probably be like one of those little bratty brats if I had both parents in the house <laughs> but my mom was good enough you know what I mean we we where we went out of the country. I mean, there were things that my mom made sure that we knew that we were getting that other kids didn't get. Mm -hmm. And would, we as your siblings. Yeah, I have a twin sister. Oh, whoa. Yeah. And so she would always tell us, you know, you guys are blessed. Mm -hmm. You're you're in a good position. She would take us to the hospital and visit people. Mm -hmm. I mean, like people you didn't know. Yeah, we. she would take us to the hospital. Right. Um, we did a lot of charity work. Mm-hmm. 
we did a lot of giving. We were very active. She made sure we were active and well-rounded. Mm-hmm. We were in Girl Scouts all the way up until cadets. We started as brownies. Mm-hmm. So we developed certain, um, what's those things? Like um, Skills. Skill. There uh-huh. you go. That was the word. Yeah. Skills and training and just at an early age responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, honesty. I mean, she instilled honesty, mm-hmm. being truthful, um, committing you know mm-hmm. she always said proper preparation prevents poor production you know you fully commit you don't just half-ass do anything yeah and so i think all of that stuff growing up just it, it made me who i am mm-hmm. i mean it was my foundation mm-hmm. you know i don't steal i don't cheat i don't kill <laughs> you know thank god <laughs> please don't kill anybody <laughs> Janice, we want oh you my here. god i know let uh, me ask you this <laughs> did i answer your question you did and we're gonna okay. we're gonna you did really well okay. and I'm, we're gonna d- dive even farther into cool. that um this is awesome are you having fun already i am Look, we're like five minutes in i love it <laughs> let me ask you this what was it about your mom that made her so unique in within her parenting skills and being able to just be the powerhouse she was like was it her parents that did the same thing or I think it probably could have been my grandparents, but I also think it was my mom just being transparent and knowledgeable about the world she was bringing up two little black girls in. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you got to be tough. Mm-hmm. People not going to like you, mm-hmm. period. Get over it. Okay, what's the, no one can stop you from doing anything it is you want to do. Yeah. You don't give that power away to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, again, like I said, my mom was a senior accountant for a very big corporation. Um, so we were able to go places. She always said, you know, you know, you guys are like six, seven years old. You're going out of the country. You're doing things. There's some kids in another city that have never been out their block, never yeah. been around the corner, yeah. let alone out the state. And so you she, have a passport. Yeah. So she would just tell us things like that. Yeah. Uh, um, what are some places that she took you? I mean, I, I remember Canada. Like I uh-huh. just, I was, I just remember I'm like, oh my God, I just love this place. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh. Well, one, we lived in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, her job transferred her upstate New York in West Henrietta, oh, which wow. is a little suburb of Rochester. Uh-huh. And we were the only black family in our town. Culture yes. shock. What was that like? It was uh, different. Uh-huh. That was my first introduction to Amish people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had an introduction to Amish people. Go on. <laughs> It was, I mean, it was our first introduction to Amish people. Mm -hmm. A lot of our friends and neighbors were either deaf or hearing impaired, which is where I first learned sign language, um, because I'm fluent in sign language. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it was different, but it it just added to the well-roundedness that she was already instilling in us from from birth. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me and my sister to be able to deal with the fact that you, you're going to go through this world and there's going to be some people who don't like you, who mm-hmm. don't like your kind, mm-hmm. that's not going to stop you. You know, I, I was the only black kid in my class. Uh, okay, and so it's uh, my I'm going out on a limb here, but my yeah. gut tells me that when you talk about people aren't going to like you, I feel like you didn't have a, 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 a terrible experience, right? If, is that my, That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't. You were did. accepted. It was you probably. Had, it sounds like you had a good childhood. I did have a good childhood, but I also wasn't blind to what was going on. I experienced things mm-hmm. because of my character and confidence and mm-hmm. color of my skin, but that didn't stop me. Mm-hmm. Like you not liking me because I'm black. Then well, that's stupid. Yeah. I mean. And that's and, your and, issue, not mine. Yeah, and I would probably tell you that too if I was like seven or eight years old. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's just the mouth I had on me. So do you remember, and I don't want to go too deep or too dark here, but mm-hmm. do you remember any like racist experiences that you had as a kid, if any? Hmm. And I'm, and I'm hoping that you say, yeah. no. well, I was hoping I mean, you said no. No, I'm, I'm just trying to think. I just remember like maybe people looking weird at my mom because mm-hmm. we're in this area, mm-hmm. nice area. And she's got two little black kids mm-hmm. and we stand out. Mm-hmm. We're different, mm-hmm. but did that make us not do what we had to do and, and continue? Do you know what I mean? Did I, I get it. Yeah. No, it didn't stop anything. It's like, nah, fool, we here. And it fueled you, if anything. Yeah. Right? I mean, because I'm, I'm, I've always been smart. Mm-hmm. I was one of the smartest kids in my class. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm very social. So we were different, so to speak, because we were one black family in an entire Caucasian community. Mm-hmm. But I had friends. We were social. They came over to the house. My mom was the troop leader. You oh, know wow. what I mean? My mom was the Girl Scout troop leader. So, 
I, again, I wish my vocabulary was a bit more broad because unique is the only word I can think about when I hear this. This is so just unique. <laughs> it really is. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much to be said for, you know, being able to just continue to be, you, be comfortable in your own skin, have your mom support you and really affect a town. You, I'm sure you guys did. You may not know it, but you probably affected this town yes. in a great way. Yeah, I, I received that. Uh -huh. Totally. All right. So I'm excited about this because <laughs> you've got a very, um, a very colorful career and I feel like you're just getting started, right? So let's let's tell some of the viewers a bit about what you've been doing with your time, what you do for work, and what led you to these passions. Cool. So currently, I am an actress, mm -hmm. stunt woman, playwright. Okay. Okay. Um, but I originally, at the age of eight years old, knew that I wanted to be a sign language interpreter for deaf athletes and sports commentator. Like, that was my... That's really specific. Very specific, but I knew it. I wrote uh -huh. it down. I still have it written down in my planner. And so that was what I wanted to do ever since the age of, like, eight, nine years mm -hmm. old. And I can say that I kind of delved into that a little bit because... You know, in college, I was working at the radio station. I did on air. I was on air radio personality. I did interviews. Mm -hmm. You know, on the sidelines. So I, I've done literally everything that I said I would do or wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I, this, the whole stunt career, the whole acting thing, happened because after I was doing bobsledding, I came back and I was like. You know, I kind of just want to do like sports modeling, athletic modeling. Mm -hmm. I'm a jock. I'm athletic. Mm -hmm. You know, I have the physical build. You're gorgeous. Oh, thank, thank you. know what? <laughs> Jamaican jeans all day. Jamaican jeans. Cheers to Jamaican ja jeans. Cheers to Jamaica. <laughs> oh, my God. So I was like, I just want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that. I started do literally, I literally say those, those things like I'm going to do this and then I just do it. Uh-huh. And so, again, that goes into speaking things into existence uh -huh. and making it happen. And so I started doing several different, like, Nike campaigns. I did print for, like, their CrossFit, their soccer, all these different campaigns. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I'm just tired of doing print. I don't want to just be standing here holding a kettlebell. Mm -hmm. I'm more active than that. I, need, I want some physicality. Mm -hmm. And so um, I said, I mean, this was after I watched a movie and I saw this guy running really horribly. And as a track athlete... I'm like, how he running same arm, same leg? That don't even that don't even work. Like it's so uncomfortable watching him, and then he's doing it like it's the easiest thing to do. Right. And I'm like, I see all these stunt credits, and I'm like, I could totally do stunts. Like uh -huh. one, I'm an athlete, natural athlete. Um, I work really hard. I competed for my country. I could totally do this. Is so, this bobsledding? When you, so this was this was when I was talking about. I'm sorry, no, I'm following you. But when you say you competed for your country, is that oh, when you refer? Yeah, is that bobsledding? So, yeah, so I did bobsledding like it was totally like small stint, but I did it. What? Yeah, yeah, I okay, went. Go I, on. I did. Yeah, because you, you kind of breezed. You breezed over that earlier, and I was like, <laughs> so go ahead. Yes, cool runnings. Yes, you you, you got it. <laughs> This is just more about you. So go on, talk to you. So you watch the stunt credits. Yeah, and I was like, I can do that. Like, yeah. I ran like, for my, not just ran, like, I, I did track collegiately. Mm -hmm. I can do this. Mm -hmm. I'm an athlete. I've done Nike campaigns. Come on. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of research about it. Um, I, you know, realized that to be a stunt performer, you got to have some air awareness and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I went and looked up a gym and then I don't know how this happened or where where it you know where it tied up but because mm -hmm. in the middle of this stuff I was doing acting as a jock mm -hmm. in different shows and then I was also doing background and extra work mm -hmm. so if you didn't see me on set as an extra then you saw me as like a principal jock mm -hmm. like I was back and forth the hustle Jamaicans mm -hmm. you know we got like eight nine jobs so. <laughs> I was seeing um, this anyway. <laughs> so, so I was doing all that. Probably. And this is why I wanted you here, because I know that there's so much to right. you. I keep yeah. interrupting. Go on. No, you're fine, because I probably was babysitting at night. Who knows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I was doing all of that, and then probably someone I met was like, this gym. I, this gym was called White Lotus, and it was in Reseda slash Northridge. And okay. a lot of stunt performers, athletes, martial artists were mm -hmm. training there. Mm -hmm. So I talked to one of the guys, and and. I paid him to be my private gymnastics slash tumbling instructor. And I was taking private lessons with this guy for months. 
I mean, my mom always said, be a student of the sport, mm -hmm. regardless of what the sport is. Mm -hmm. You got to do your research, find out what they do. Where, I mean, no one says they're going to be a dentist and don't know that you got to pull some teeth, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So she always told us, be a student of the sport. Mm -hmm. So I researched, what do stunt performers need to do? I was like, well, I definitely need to know how to probably do a backflip or something. Mm -hmm. So got the guy. He was teaching me how to do a backflip, wall flip, tumbling, air awareness, all like basic foundational skills that you need. Mm -hmm. And from there, just kind of navigating my way through. Mm -hmm. I reached out to a couple people who looked like me, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. provided no help, mm -hmm. which was fine because, again, no is not an option. So you reached out to some, some black women and they, they would not oh, they would not help. I, look, I keep receipts, people. I got the receipts. <laughs> if you ever want to see, I got the receipts still to this day. Uh -huh. Yeah. I literally reached out to a lady and was, she was basically told me, I can't help you. And then had the nerve to send a prayer. Girl, do Wow. That's why I don't receive prayers from everybody. You yeah, got to be careful. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And there's so much to be said about people who um, don't want to see other people succeed. Thank you. Or don't want to continue to help. Because we all can Thank help. You. you know, it would have been super easy for her to help you. Oh, let me find a number. Let me connect you to this. Let me think about a way I can help you. First of all, yeah. you're a veteran. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what are you, like grandma who dies with the secret sauce and no one in the family right. gets to benefit from it? Right. Like, who does this? That's stuff? selfish and not right. Exactly. Right. You're, the, the, for me, a big part of uh, you know be, us being here is again, it takes a village. It's about looking out for each other. Totally. I'm going to interrupt you real quick, and, yes. I, and I, what I'd like for you to do because <laughs> we're going to circle back to White Lotus. Okay. But, but I want to. <laughs> I I made this note about five minutes ago, and I just I can't take my eyes off it. You said, <laughs> excuse me. Yes. You said speaking things into existence. Yes. When I hear you talk about how you're able to do things and you just get it done, there's a disconnect for a lot of people and I think it has to do with self-doubt. What do you have to say to people? What is it about that you're just like, okay, I want to do it and I do it? Like, it's easy for you and it's not easy for the majority of people. What what words do you have for them? Like, does that make sense? It makes perfect sense and this is what... Um Okay, so I'm, I'm going to try to, because I, I swear like a sailor, the Lord's still working on me. And you can swear here. We're, okay. We're, uh -huh. Oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> I should have said that. Please forgive me, Lord. Okay. <laughs> Stop worrying about what other motherfuckers got to say. Yeah. Period. Yeah. So many people will mm -hmm. get shit done. If they stop worrying about what other people think, mm -hmm. why are you worried about what they think? Do they provide food on your table? Screw, not even food. Do they even provide you with a banana? Mm -hmm. Okay? That you can, bananas are cheap. I think you can get them for like 33 cents. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Do they even give you that? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you worried about what someone thinks? Mm -hmm. And I don't move like that. And I think that is the big disconnect. Mm -hmm. I have the confidence. Mm -hmm. I have the faith. I have the skill or whatever, the mm -hmm. mindset. A lot mm -hmm. of this is mindset, mm -hmm. you know. But at the end of the day, I think the foundational disconnect is people are so worried about what other people think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I don't move like that. Because mm -hmm. I don't care what you think. I really don't. And for, and what's interesting about that, it's all about energy and where you place your focus and energy. And I guess what I'm hearing is the, the, when you just put, do you, and not worry about the outside noise, you can get so much done. So much. So much. Look, I got about eight owls burning on the stove. I can't mm -hmm. worry about what you're doing because yeah. I don't want none of my stuff to burn. Yeah. yeah. None of it to burn. Yeah. Is this just your mantra because you just want to live life to its fullest? Or this is just, part again, just part of who you are? I think it's, it's not I think. I know it's part of who, who I am, mm -hmm. but I also can operate like that so confidently because I believe that this is part of my purpose. Mm -hmm. Part of my purpose mm -hmm. is to be an example for people to be like, Fuck what everybody else is saying. Yeah, yeah. As, as I get older, I'm 42, I realize now that purpose is so important. It's, yes. It's like, what are we doing on earth? I was talking about having kids. I don't have kids, but for some people, ki kids can give you purpose. Like, what you're doing for you, how you doing you, and, and all of these different avenues, it's giving you purpose. Yes. And so to viewers who are scared, or listeners who people, for folks that just don't want to step out of their comfort zone, think about it. This is part can be part of your purpose. Yeah. You know, what you're leaving here on earth. Yeah. Um. All right, so, and again, thank you for, because I had tend to go all over the place. I love, when I tell you, 
I am so glad to be here. I'm really so glad to be here. I really am. This is awesome. Good. Well, this will be this will be one of many, right? Yes. We're definitely going to have. Oh my God. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. So we talked about White Lotus. You talked about how you started to learn um air awareness and yeah. So pick back up where you left off. So you reached out to some people. Some people helped. Some people didn't. Mm -hmm. What happened after that? So after that, um, and what's crazy is again. So I started in the industry mm -hmm. acting first, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Making the switch and transitioning into the stunts is a little different. Yeah. Um, but so while I'm training there, I'm meeting other stunt performers. And through that connection, you know, people can see what you're working on. People see your skills and all these different things. And that kind of is what builds the work mm -hmm. you know it's almost like your peers are the ones hiring you because mm -hmm. they're getting contacted some probably some of the more established ones are mm -hmm. getting contacted by like a coordinator and they'll be like hey do you know a black girl who can do this or mm -hmm. that oh yeah i know a girl or you know whatever so i i think that kind of like started yeah it helped and then i joined the stunt softball league whoa okay yeah cool. so the <laughs> That is a weird visual. Okay, no, you, like, no, no. I, I'm pitching out doing backflips while you're catching balls out the third, the, you know, left field. Literally, Go ahead. it's softball being played by some performers. Got it. Okay. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So by joining that, you know, it's it's this whole quote unquote networking thing yeah, and camaraderie, and having fun right. and people getting to know. And at the time when I did it, it was only like three other chocolate chips in the field you know what i mean so it wasn't easy to i mean it wasn't hard to find me right so just through that and just building the building the relationships training yeah. and because i train hard mm -hmm. i train i constantly train you know and i care about my training environments mm -hmm. you know some people are so stuck on i gotta train over there with them because they do da -da -da. Mm -hmm. look I'm trying to train in a good space. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm supposed to fail in training. So when I get on set, God damn it, I don't, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But you have these people, you know, you'll find them everywhere. You know, some people want to talk bad if you're training this way and that way. I hear stories all the time and I ask people, well, then why do you train there? Mm -hmm. Or why are you training with him? Mm -hmm. Just because of his name? Fuck that. At the end of the day, you care about the skill, right? Yeah. yeah. But again, I'm different. I mm -hmm. know I'm different. Mm -hmm. So, but through all that, and then I, I would say probably my, my, best or like favorite moment was when um i love her to death her name is heidi pascal okay veteran stunt lady girl lover she um put my name in a she, okay so a coordinator called her um for it was for true blood mm -hmm. and he was like hey heidi do you know um somebody who can double you know, this girl, because I have this girl. It was another black girl. Mm -hmm. To this day, I don't know who it was. Mm -hmm. And and he goes over to Heidi. So this is this tends, this tends is what tends to happen. Heidi was doubling Anna Paquin or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he went to Heidi. Hey, Heidi, do you know this girl? Or, you know, I want her to double so-and-so. And Heidi was like, I don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. But I know a girl who would be perfect mm -hmm. right there. The guy called me based on her referral. And mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how, um, just how important that was. I had never, ever worked with Heidi on set before. Mm -hmm. It's really um, challenging sometimes for people to refer you and never have worked with you. Right. But It's what, a lot of pressure. Yeah, but Heidi literally said, Janisha, I see you training. I, I know your skills. Yeah. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. And I know you can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was just divine intervention all day. And it, that is kind of literally what started the ball rolling for me. Mm -hmm. I did I did the final season of True Blood. Were, were you Routina Wesley's body double? Or I oh my god! So many people think I would be on set sometimes, and they would call me Routina. Right. No, I was her mom. Oh wow! Adina, yeah, Adina, yeah, 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 yeah. I, that was one of my I, favorite shows ever. Yeah, I stunt doubled for her mom, gotcha. Adina Porter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there was an episode where I stunt doubled for the sheriff on there because she got banned oh, down the right. hallway that's one right. time or something uh -huh. like that uh -huh. but yeah but it wow. was just crazy and that's that's kind of how you know and th that really kind of got the ball uh -huh. rolling so uh -huh. it was just really cool Heidi so so do you have a relationship with her still I love her yeah, yeah. she's like just like fam to you right uh, she's fam all day uh -huh. all day so tell us so after true blood tell us more about what you've done and I also move into what's next Okay, um, so after True Blood, stuff started, you know, 
And coming down the yeah. pipeline, mm-hmm. um, the same coordinator for True Blood, his friend was coordinating Hawaii Five O, mm-hmm. and so at the time this was all going on while I was doing wrestling as Frost, based on my experience as a bobsledder. Yeah. Oh my! I can't even keep <laughs> up, dude. G- okay, wrestling. Go Look, ahead. Jamaican. I keep telling y'all eight, diff- eight, nine different jobs. But I feel like we all just think that's kind of a joke. You are not kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Jeez. So okay. So yeah. Pick up where you left off. Okay, so so um, they needed somebody to double this girl who was going to be um, on Hawaii Five O as this actress. Mm-hmm. Now, let me just tell you how divinely ordered this was. Mm-hmm. Because at the time, I was in a relationship. And you know how they have these timeshare things and all these, like, sign up here and you can win a free trip. Mm-hmm. So... I was queen of those, okay? <laughs> You're the sucker. Queen. <laughs> I'm like, I already know. I'm going in there. I ain't buying shit. Mm-hmm. But what I am going to get is this free meal, this free card, and this free trip you're talking about. Does it always work, too, or is it bullshit? Always. Oh, wow. Okay, always. go ahead. Always. I got to make always. a note of that. Oh, yeah. And so I'm like queen of it. I'm talking about I didn't do them from Florida. I didn't do them across the 50 states. Wow. Yes. Okay. I always thought it was bullshit, but go ahead. No, it's not. And so, uh, me and my boyfriend, I, you know, I was like, okay, we gonna we gonna do this. Like, mm-hmm. we just we gotta go to this thing, and then we gonna get this trip to trip to Hawaii. It's like a four day trip to Hawaii. Okay, we did, and I'm giving you backstory so I can fast forward. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I do the we do the timeshare thing, and then we get the trip for Hawaii. Mm-hmm. We gotta fill out, choose dates, and all of these things. So choose the dates, bam. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, we break up like, I don't know, maybe two weeks before I go to Hawaii to work on Hawaii Five O. Mm. But again, two weeks before, I don't know Hawaii Five O is coming up down the pipeline. Mm-hmm. I'm pissed off because I'm like, dude, we supposed to be going to Hawaii next month. I can't change the name. I mean, that's how they get you a lot of those things. It mm-hmm. got to be the same two people mm-hmm. or you got to pay this astronomical fee to change the name. Mm-hmm. So I'm pissed off. One, the breakup. Two, now now the Hawaii trip is in jeopardy. Mm-hmm. This was free. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. all I had to do was sit down for two hours. <laughs> so you messed it all up. I'm pissed off. Kid you not. I get a call from the coordinator. He was like, hey, Janisha, I'm, you know, coordinating a show, Y50 out here. Um, wanted to see if you were available X, Y, Z days to come out. You know, you'll probably be working only three days, so you can have the rest of the days to kind of chill and hang around. I'm like, yeah, I'm available. Do you know that I went to Hawaii and it was so ordained. I went to Hawaii during the backup date of when I was supposed to be going with my ex. Mm-hmm. That's just how it's like. I know there's purpose for my life. Yeah, I know. I was the Lord was like, no, you're supposed to go to Hawaii. You're not supposed to go with him. Right. You're not supposed to go with him. I didn't even know about Hawaii. Five mm-hmm. O shooting mm-hmm. and all that. I had mm-hmm. no idea. I didn't know anybody who worked on that show. Mm-hmm. But I was there, and I and I worked and. I was the only girl at the time um, for that particular episode that I was there for. Mm -hmm. And I got to experience an island by myself Mm -hmm. on somebody else's dime. Yeah, while getting paid. While getting paid, doing what I love. Uh And then it was the 100th episode. Oh, wow. So then I got this. I got to participate in a whole hundred episode thing uh-huh. and walk down the sand and watch the episode on the beach. And uh-huh. it's crazy. And it all the an fun experience. that came with that. So, all the fun. So what I'm hearing is that, again, is another example of divine intervention. That's totally. That's what you're calling it. Yeah. Totally. Wow. And it's, totally. There you go. You can't, you can't deny that. I can't deny it. And it all started literally from the one girl, Heidi. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. From that job. And mm-hmm. then her... The the coordinator for that show, his friend was the sh- was the coordinator for the other show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love it. I think that again, I, you know, it, you, my aunt always used to say, "There ain't nothing to it but to do it," and it's just it's, it's just beauty. It's like you you put yourself out there, you know, you're doing you. You're not saying no, and the results are fantastic. So c- continuing, okay. I want to know what's next. Okay, so. Um, I mean, after you know all those different shows and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I book a couple of acting things in between there. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, I would say all those two shows kind of started the momentum. Mm-hmm. And then I started doubling um, 
actresses like Miss Angela Bassett mm -hmm. kind of doubled her like multiple times on different shows mm -hmm. and then uh, Black Panther comes around mm -hmm. you know again that's another thing that was you know, divine intervention. I had not heard of Black Panther getting his own show. Mm -hmm. uh, a black stunt lady had told me like, hey, Janisha, cause she was working on Captain America. Mm -hmm. um, was it Captain America? Yeah, she, I think she, she was working on one of those Marvel shows where the Black Panther was first introduced. Mm -hmm. I want to say it was Captain America. Oh yeah, Captain America Civil War. That's okay. what it was. So she oh was yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when he first got introduced. Mm -hmm. So she tells me, hey, Janisha, um, they're going to give Black Panther his own movie. So, you know, get your fighting and stuff, get your skills, you know, just make sure you got your skills ready because they're going to need people who look just like you mm -hmm. and are skilled just like you. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, cool. She told me that in April, there had been no announcement or anything about Black Panther getting his own movie. But I took it as a Lord, as giving, using her, like giving me in, information, mm -hmm. like be ready. Yeah. Be ready. My mom always said it's better to be needed. It's better to be ready and not needed than to be needed and not ready. I'll say it again. I My get, mom yeah. always said it's better to be ready, ready and, and not, not needed, needed than to be needed and, and not, not ready. ready. And you know what I do for work. That sounds exactly about exactly. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I took that as, bitch, get ready. Yeah. Be, so be prepared. I, yeah. So I started preparing. I started training, picked up the Taekwondo, and I knew I was going to do Taekwondo because Taekwondo is 80% kicks, 20% hand. And you can't watch one action movie and don't see somebody throw a roundhouse or something, right. side kick, a jump and spin, flying, all these different things. Mm -hmm. Picked it up. And, and on top of that training, every day I said, thank you, Lord, for Black Panther. I said that every day morning mm -hmm. that started my prayer thank Work, you lord for black panther. the universe yeah thank you lord for black panther thank you lord for black panther then stuff started slowly being introduced oh, okay black panther is coming out oh they got you know this actress is gonna be playing so and so and, and this and that and so again my prayer was like thank you lord for black panther thank you lord for black panther my best friend calls me says hey do you watch that movie or, or she said do you watch that show walking dead and I was like, no, what is that? She was like, it's that zombie thing or whatever, but there's a black girl on it, and she's supposed to be in Black Panther. I was like, really? My best friend goes, you should double her. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I don't, I don't even know what she's doing, but mm -hmm. okay. So I just, again, was like, thank you, Lord, for Black Panther. Thank you, Lord, for Black Panther. Finally get to get the audition. Now, I got an audition through casting first, mm -hmm. the acting side. Mm -hmm. Um, and after I did that audition, then I was contacted through the stunt side and then it was like a, so you were coming from two different, uh, yeah, approaches. my first, my first audition for black Panther was through the acting portion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sarah Finn casting. She cast all the Marvel movies mm -hmm. and then I got contacted through the, um, stunt side. Mm -hmm. So I was like, did they, cause in the acting audition, I had to do kicks and stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm like, did they? tell stunts or something or right. were they in I, communication i know i was like i, I mean I, I don't know so then through that process i was invited to a stunt like only black panther audition mm -hmm. i went down there i did that that was a process and this was all happening in you know september october is mm -hmm. so you're talking about me praying every day from april may june july august september october i mean it's like seven months of prayer straight right. daily every day yeah. same prayer then I get an email, and after that martial arts audition, and one of the guys says, hey, we want to know what your availability is like from, like, November to May. You know, are you available? I'm like, yeah, I'm available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, Ready to go. I totally, Bags are packed. I, totally available. He goes, like, we'd love to use you. And I'm like, get the hell, yes. Awesome, yes. I call my pastor. I call everybody. Did like, you cry? I think I did cry. Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, oh my God, this is awesome. So then I tell my pastor, my pastor gives me word. This is amazing. Awesome. Then they go, so um, we forgot to tell you that you're going to have to shave your head for this. We're going to, you're going to have to cut your hair for this is what he said. I said, okay, well, um, I have plenty of short haired wigs. You know, so I sent him pictures, me with different wigs on. He was like, no, nah, I think they want it shorter than that. I'm like, okay, okay. 
But then he's like, no, no, no. I think they want to cut it. Like, they want it to be, you know, bald. And in my head, I'm like, how do you forget to tell somebody that? Right. Like, how do, how do... <laughs> That's not a haircut, okay? That's not a trim. That is bald on a woman. Go ahead. Now, that, I was crying. Uh-huh. I cried to my pastor. Yeah. I cried to my friend. And my friend was like, are you... She calls me Frosty. Are you really crying over some hair, Frosty? <laughs> my friend Anna's. <laughs> she was like... I'm mad you calling me about crying over some hair. Yeah. Hair go back, yeah. you know? And so I talked to my brother. My brother was like, I was like, no. Were you look. considering not taking the job because of that? Totally. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I get it. We get it. And I told my brother, I was like, I'm going to look like a boy. My brother's like, you are not going to look like a boy. No. You're not going to look like your boy with your head shaved. So I call my pastor. I tell him. And my pastor goes, Jesus sacrificed it all on the cross. You mean to tell me you can't sacrifice your hair? I mean, isn't this what you were praying for, this opportunity? He was like, I will tell you this much. Your sacrifice will never outweigh your reward. And literally. Set you straight. Set me straight. Yeah. And I've been straight ever since. Uh Uh-huh. And you would shave your head again? I would shave it again. Uh Uh-huh. And had to again. Oh. (laughs) I had to shave it again. I shaved it for Infinity War. Mm -hmm. I had to shave it for Endgame. Mm -hmm. I worked on Godzilla and doubled the actress over there. I Mm -hmm. shaved it for Godzilla. You know what I mean? It's just like. Wow. But the sacrifice has not even matched the rewards I've been given. Yeah, it doesn't even hold a candle. No, not at all. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. Uh Uh-huh. I I love how, and again, I think with this podcast, it's really trying to kind of get deep a little bit and circle back to moments like that. And there's just so much to be said for, A, the power of prayer, right? Yes. Or affirmations, whatever you believe. Uh Uh-huh. And I like that. The the sacrifice, the reward is way bigger than the sacrifice. It doesn't matter what you're doing. That's beautiful. And being real. Like, I'm being real. I almost did not consider taking that job because i had to shave my hair all because of hair that grows back hair that yeah. grows back hair that i say now because well, let's be honest though we all get it right I mean, yeah we get it because i have to you know i had hair on my head you know what i mean <laughs> i was no picky head chick my <laughs> hair was long i got the receipts y'all can check the pictures my <laughs> hair was long okay long i was so it was uh, a real sacrifice uh, it was a, it wasn't a short sacrifice it was a it was real was... sacrifice <laughs> <laughs> My hair, it took hours to do my hair at the shop, okay? <laughs> okay, so, so sorry. <laughs> All right, so, because, because we, because, so, so I want, I want you, to, I want to know what's next. Because again, I didn't know you had such a, a long book of business and resume. And I know you got a lot more, but tell us, let's fast forward, tell us what's next. What can we get excited about? Or do you, do you have something on the. I mean, okay, so, <laughs> you know, previous to like this Corona Copolis, I'm calling it, this, this <laughs> pandemic, this plague, it's a, yeah. it's a plague, y'all. Yeah. It's what it is. So before And I want to hear your thoughts about that too, but go ahead. Yeah. Before this, um, I was in the middle of four projects and um, one of them has not been able to finish, Mm -hmm. um, but I had basically filmed most of my stuff with the exception of like one scene, I think. And then two of the projects were, are complete. One of them just put out a trailer like not too long ago, um, Lovecraft Country. Mm. I worked on that. It's a J.J. Abrams um, it's like sci-fi project, and it should be really, really good. I got to double Ingenue um, Ellis on there. Do you ever plan to, to maybe move more into acting and like maybe eventually have somebody double you, or do you always want to stay in the field that you're in? So, um, good question. Remember, I started off acting first. Yeah, yeah. And um, I have been doing acting jobs. Like, mm-hmm. I, I played Officer Khan and, tactical com- and the Tactical Commander on Station 19, which is the Grey's Anatomy spinoff. Dope. No stunts. Okay. You know, yeah. the Team Shonda Land, y'all, look. Shonda Rhimes. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I have to shot her out for... Just shotting her out. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Because she's um, such a powerhouse. Powerhouse. Yeah. Um, and anybody that takes a chance on me uh, tells me they team Jesus. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I rep that. And that was just an awesome. Hyphy for Christ. That is my, that's my business name. That's that. Yay. I'm from the yes. Bay Area. Hey, so, yeah. Go Bears. I'm Berkeley. from the Bay Area. Yes, I love All it. day. So, um, but, you know, that whole experience with station 19 was really cool Mm -hmm. for me too because it was just like i felt like it was god first of all let me be really real with Mm y'all i got the call 
that I booked the tactical commander job for Station 19, the week I got fired from working on a movie because I refused to allow some raggedy, rude actress to talk to me crazy. Whoa. Yes. Wow. Yes. So that's why, again, I know there's an anointing on my life and I'm and I'm I have a purpose Mm -hmm. because I walk, you know, in the favor and I am and I and I'm not as scared. I'm not scared to speak up. I'm Mm -hmm. not scared to stand up for what's right. Mm -hmm. You don't get to disrespect me and me not say anything. Mm hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't I don't know how some people do it, mm-hmm. honestly. They're, oh, my God, I'm scared, my boss. I'm scared. Well, no, no, no. How about you should be mad that your boss is doing that and that your boss should be scared? Mm-hmm. How about that? Let's flip the switch. Mm-hmm. You know, nowadays we got camera phones and mm-hmm. iPhones and iPad phones, watch phones. Mm-hmm. I mean, if somebody acting out, record it. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I had a... What do you think about this Karen culture and all these people acting out? And like the, this, like let's talk about that. That phone moment. What do you have to say to that? Because I think that a lot of people are like the big picture here is holding people accountable in those moments. Absolutely, I think um, I think people need to be held accountable. But uh-huh. I think also sometimes that stuff is a little foo foo. Uh huh. As far as like the recordings and because it's one, it's you got to be careful where you are. Uh-huh. Are you the agitator? Or are you really trying to show justice, do justice? Mm -hmm. Because there's sometimes where I've watched a lot of these videos that kind of pop up on my feed and thread, and I'd be Mm -hmm. like, that didn't need to be recorded. I didn't care about that. I mean, what? Mm -hmm. You just wasted time. Now you you out here trying to do something Mm -hmm. so you can get 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, you ain't getting my 15 minutes Mm because, again, I got eight things burning over here, you know, cooking up. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's just like this fine line to figure out, like, are you really trying to show justice and show that this type of person is out here doing craziness mm-hmm. or did you egg it on? Uh-huh. What are you your You know intentions? what I mean? Yeah. 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 There's, people always have intentions uh-huh. and they have hidden agendas. Yeah. And I think with my discernment, I'm able to kind of figure out where where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of where I stand on that. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And trust me, I made a very hard left turn right there. But, um, you know, as we talk about how con- your confidence and how your mother raised you and how you, I don't want to use the word outspoken. You're just confident and you're stern within your word. You're impeccable with your word. There's meaning with with, with the words that you choose to use. Yes. So, Some but, people will call it radical and I'm totally yeah, fine with that. I don't think it's radical. I think it's just knowing thyself and being impeccable with your word and being clear and having intent. And it's, you know, and it's out of the norm because so many people normalize bullshit Correct. and normalize weakness uh-huh. and nor- and they don't nor- they don't make strength normalized right and it's easier for them to be passive and sit in the in the sidelines yes yeah All and day. that's why i think a lot you and i have a lot in common and it's like i think we always look at it like well we're different and what is it about us that's different but it's like we're all not that different it's just a matter of being confident and being exactly. able to find your voice and use it exactly you know I'm, I've, I've been well, we'll talk about this off camera never mind um <laughs> So, and I, I, I want to talk about this real quick because I don't want to get too political with you, but I want to move into a little bit about Kamala. I want to learn a little bit about what, what your thoughts are as far as at least what's going on. And I always ask people this. Are you hopeful? If you had kids, would you feel good about it right now? Like, are you hopeful for the future? Because it's you, I will I will say stuff. But I, 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 <laughs> I tend to not go into politics. Got it. But because um, I'm not a Democrat. Uh-huh. Um, I consider myself to be a uh, anarchist libertarian Republican uh-huh. and they do exist people. Uh-huh. So uh, do your research. Um, what I will say is I call him Jim Crow Joe. Mm-hmm. Oh, Period. Joe Biden? Yes. Gotcha. And again, don't feel the need to, to, to go political with yeah. this. I, I want to try to see if you just, if we, if, if kids of color can, if you if you have hope for them. But go on with Joe. Go hmm. on with what you were saying. Uh, when a person has been shown what they've done uh-huh. a million times uh-huh. and still not admit uh-huh. to it, I got a problem. Yeah. Because at the end of the day. That's integrity. Integrity is being truthful. Yeah, it's it's being, being honest. honest. Right. Period. Mm-hmm. If you ain't got it, 
I'm not with you, Mm -hmm. period. I don't care. And I think so many people want to say this. Well, if you don't vote for them, that's a vote for them. And that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't vote for them, that means I don't vote for them. Mm -hmm. My vote not for them is not a vote for them. Mm -hmm. That's dumb. Mm -hmm. I don't know where people get that shit from. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you didn't vote for Sally, so that means you voted for Susan. No, bitch, that means I didn't vote for Sally. Right. It has nothing to do with Susan. It has nothing not to do with Susan. It does not mean I support that person. Exactly. Work. It has nothing to do with Susan. Mm-hmm. And I think black people are so, if you give a black person or the culture mm-hmm. a different way to think, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, God, oh, does not compute, does not compute. They just, mm-hmm. like, you try to educate them. You try to give them different options, mm-hmm. and, and, and they, they don't get it. You know, culturally, we just like, no, 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 I'm going to stay stuck in these Sambo days, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. I, 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 no mass and no sir. And I'm like, bro, mm-hmm. look. It's okay to like five different things. Right. You go into the grocery store all the time and buy five boxes of cereal mm-hmm. from four different brands. Mm-hmm. You're going to buy Post, Kellogg, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, mm-hmm. Quaker. Mm-hmm. But you mean to tell me you mad at me because I might like his policy mm-hmm. and then his policy and mm-hmm. not like his? Mm-hmm. That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. But what I'm hearing is that you are just you're more probably more politically aware than a lot of people. I think that a lot of people. I just, am more aware. Right. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? And I think I that a lot of people. Right. And, and you read and you're, you're interested. You find interest. And I do research. Yeah. Well, to see, but a lot of people, what's happening is they're only they're, they cherry pick things and they only know so much. And so that's what's unfortunate is you shouldn't feel guilty. Uh, not that you do. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. You, you know. There should be pride in, in how you identify politically or not. Because, Absolutely. Because that's what that's the conclusions you've come to from the research, and those are things that resonate with you. It's yeah. not black or white. It's not it's, left or right. It's and it shouldn't be that. Yeah. It's it's not that easy. Yeah, I was registered Republican for a while, and and the more recent years I've been registered Libertarian. Mm-hmm. But um, at the end of the day, I think people allow the media see the media you let the media tell you what to watch mm-hmm. and I what to believe i'm gonna be honest i was the first person to crack that you know this little wp symbol that that lady did at the fourth of july celebration because you know why because i actually watched the thing from beginning to end oh um uh, right, yeah right. Right. i forgot what her, name. her name Ugh, yeah somebody yeah. it don't matter but i watched it the whole the whole ceremony i watched it uh-huh. i didn't let the media I had posted them pictures and clips that I took well before anybody else posted online on the Internet. I got the receipts Uh because I watched it. I didn't need the media to show me what some lady did, and Uh I took their soundbite. I watched the whole thing. I came to your own conclusions. Yes. So I think... Which is research. Yeah, and I think people just take whatever the the media say. Oh, they said this. What? Mm -hmm. Like, people went crazy on Kanye. Mm -hmm. You know, Let let me state this. Kanye might be a lot of things... Right. Mm -hmm. But in there is some truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mm -hmm. you better what my friend says, you better chew the meat and spit out the bone. Mm -hmm. But again, culturally, you give us a different option to Mm -hmm. think about Mm -hmm. and you 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 go crazy Mm because Kanye talks some real stuff. So you're you like Kanye. I mean, I, look, I do. I like him musically. I think that you know, I I, I like that he's uh, exposes his bipolar syndrome. I think that the fact that he's vulnerable with people. I think he's more truthful than most. Right. I do question some of the things that he says, and I do think sometimes he needs to tight, tighten it up and step back a little bit. But He'd that, be off. Right. But that's me. What do you think about Candace Owens? I think Candace says a lot of truth, uh-huh. but I think a lot of people, again, I don't like her because she this. I don't like her because she that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, but are you listening to what she's talking about? Right. And are you Y'all got at- absent fathers, okay? Uh-huh. They're not in your families. Uh-huh. They're out in the bout. They're doing whatever. They, they're they locked up. They're in jail. I mean, she speaks some truth. Yeah. I'm not saying the girl's talking 100 all the time. Mm-hmm. Hell, ain't nobody talking, no 100, talking 100 all the time. time. Totally. But let somebody say that, and they're like, whoa, well, you this and you that. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I posted a clip of what Candace said. Um, Candace was speaking truth. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, I don't like her, man. F that girl and blah, blah, blah. Well, fine, whatever. You sound ignorant as hell because yeah. you're so busy worried about the personality. Mm-hmm. You're not listening about the words that's coming out of her mouth, mm-hmm. and she's speaking truth. So mm-hmm. I think our culture, we're just so disturbed by another way of thinking yeah that doesn't resonate with what we believe exactly and we don't know how to take the nuggets right 
And she, right, take the nuggets that that can that can we can apply to ourselves that that lie within our morals and and you know the things that are important apply to us. Apply and then move on. Right, right, and leave, and like you said, leave the bone. I love that. Yeah. Um, you know, probably about five months ago, four or five months ago, I saw something on my feed. It was regarding Candace Owens, and I watched it. And within five minutes, I was like, "This is bullshit." <laughs> and so then I, all these people started posting it, and I was like, "You know what?" And I. I I started to unfriend people. At that, in that moment, I unfriended two people, and I said, wait a minute, this isn't right. Let me take a step back. Let me take a step back. Me, <laughs> right? So I had some conversations with some friends, and I did some research, and I watched. Uh, she was on a dais with six other people, and she had some profound, powerful things to say, and I said, you know what? Hmm. And I had prejudged her, and from one sound from bite. From one sound bite. From one clip, and from five minutes, I said, oh, Candace Owens is crazy. And then I, I took, after that whole moment, a learning experience for me, I took a step back and started to, again, do some research, and I learned that she really knows her shit and she's entitled to have her own um, opinion. opinion yeah Clearly, it doesn't have to jive with everybody i'm not saying she's right about everything but she's she's factual with a lot of stuff and that's and that's all that's all i'm saying uh-huh. is that you know like you my see friend, why i asked this is yeah, a great exactly I love this. This yeah like great. my my friend jessica is the one who said you know uh her grandma told her to chew the meat spit out the bone mm-hmm. i mean is candace owens saying everything everybody want to hear all the time mm-hmm. absolutely not mm-hmm. but there's some good nuggets in there that could change your life and you that I, th- correct and what's interesting about her is i think that at first we're like oh what a sellout like you know you don't you know you're not even looking out for your people but at the end of the day if you listen to a lot of what she's she saying talks about her grandpa right who's a, a, a black older black man uh-huh. who lived through the civil rights and all i mean mm-hmm. she Okay, I told this to somebody because they were trying to go crazy with me, and, and my favorite word is disengaging. So mm-hmm. you got one time to go crazy with me, and I'm disengaging, <laughs> period, because I ain't got the time. What's your sign? <laughs> I'm Aquarius. Okay, go ahead. I love yeah. it. Because so, you don't play. It's boundaries. Go ahead. Yeah, totally. And so I told this to somebody else. The same way they call Candace Owens a sellout and Kanye a sellout, these are the same people who try to call... Colin Powell a sellout, a yeah, sellout. Yeah. Same people who tried to call Condoleezza, Condoleezza Rice, Rice a sellout. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, shout out Condoleezza. I like her, even mm-hmm. though she went to Stanford, my rival. <laughs> but um, anyways, <laughs> but you know, these are the same people. <laughs> Yet these are some intelligent black yeah. people yeah. who have left their mark on the world. Right. But you call them a sellout? Why? Because they are with blue uh-huh. or whatever you want to call it, uh-huh. or red or right. It's or, stupid. Or they're not following the Farrakhan, um, you know, or, I, sh- I, I mean, you know, the black, because the, I think as black folks, we're known to only have one path. That's what we've been taught. You know what I mean? It's about the movement. It's about the struggle. And it's about, you know, combating racism. And as you and I talk, and as a lot of people understand, it's it's not that simple. It's not that easy. Mm-hmm. And people like Candace Owens, people like you, people like Kanye West are starting to bridge that gap. Yeah. And it does, it's packaged with a little bit of crazy sometimes. It, yeah. It, you know? I mean, shit, I'm crazy. People think I'm crazy. And it's good. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm acquired taste. You don't like it, acquire some taste. Period. <laughs> but... At the end of the day, you know, I I I, I keep receipts. I do mm-hmm. research. I know I'm a smart cookie. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, remember when Kanye did that whole video or uh, the interview on what was it TMZ? Oh, when he was remember? standing in okay. the room. Okay, yeah, he was talking there. to the whole staff. Right. Yeah, I watched the whole interview. Uh-huh. I watched it. It was like 45 minutes long. Uh huh. There was some. Good stuff in that interview. But yeah. what did the media do? The media took a 45-second clip mm. and showed you some stupid shit that was out of context. Yeah, that's a, that's a good example. And there's endless Out of examples. context. It's a good example. So it's like, knock it off. If mm. you're only watching CNN and you don't have the decency enough to go over to BBC News mm-hmm. and see what they're fucking streaming, mm-hmm. or, or, the, or the, uh, the, the Indian people, I forget what they're called. And, Al Jazeera, that's not Indian. But yeah, um, but, but yeah mm-hmm. um, I, I forgot. But, you know, you got to branch out. I watch, uh-huh. I, I mean, I haven't watched the news in like a couple weeks. Uh-huh. But when I did, I didn't just watch CNN. Yeah, I watched Fox. What mm-hmm. what y'all talking about over here? Mm-hmm. What you talking about over here in BBC? Mm-hmm. Diversify yourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, people are just so like, that's why they're dumb, mm-hmm. you know? And that's why there's so many followers and mm-hmm. there's a limited a amount of, of leaders. Yeah, a lot of sheep. There's, there's only you, a limited amount preaching. of leaders. You're preaching, you're preaching, preaching. Do you have hope? That's a tough question. I ask everybody that. Do I have hope? Like, because with COVID and it's take the politics out of it, just with like the state of like the world. And, you know, a lot of people are just there's angst energy when you go out and a lot of people are just so much unease. Like, do you think that this is kind of the, the, the rock bottom before things get better? Like, what's your gut tell you? 
So my gut tells me, okay, again, this Corona this pandemic, this plague, it is, um, it will get better because mm -hmm. nothing stays bad the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a walking testimony. Mm -hmm. I think this is a period of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. I think this is a period of, this, this is why it is going to get better. Do I have hope? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, this period is for people to really evaluate their tribe and I'm going to tell you a story I have some people know my tribe knows but you got to evaluate your tribe right now this is the time for you to be mentally spiritually and physically fucking strong mm -hmm. excuse my French but I god damn it I mean it you're being direct yeah because if you are in a tribe of people and you can't call on one person at 2 o'clock in the morning because you're lonely or you're sad, you got the wrong tribe. Mm -hmm. You got to get the right tribe. Mm -hmm. You got to start feeding your body. In this randomness, my throat started hurting. Mm -hmm. Like my throat was hurting. It was like red. And again, I have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So I knew I had no COVID. I knew I didn't have no COVID. I'm like, Lord, first of all, every day since this pandemic, my prayer has been, thank you, God, that I don't, I'm don't. i COVID free. Thank you, God, that my friends and family are COVID free. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, that anybody connected to us is COVID free. Mm -hmm. I say that all the time. I say that in my acting, when we have our acting classes and all that stuff. So I talked to my friend, Cheryl Dumas, who's like family to me. I've known her since I was in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. She's an ICU nurse at one of the big hospitals. Mm -hmm. Whenever something goes wrong with me, I'm contacting her. Rather, I'm, I, I'm really sensitive, so I have a lot of like allergic reactions to things and, and don't eat meat a lot. So then I'm constantly, it's problems, man. Fucking mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> problems. But I'm always calling her and she's telling me what to do and all these different things, you know. So I call her, I'm like, dude, my, my throat, man, it's like fucking burning or some shit. She's like, okay, well, go, you know, check and see if there's some white patches. You know, she's soft fucking. See if there's like some white patches in your throat. It could be strep throat or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. So then I go, I look, I'm like, oh, it's nothing there. So then I get up again. I, I, got, a, I got a flashlight now, heavy duty flashlight in the <laughs> mirror, like, you know, and I'm like, oh, I think I see a little white dot. So then I rush to the doctor and then they take the test. Uh -huh. They take the little quick strep throat test uh -huh. and so um she i can hear them so spiritually i'm telling you, you guys got to be spiritually strong in this shit mm -hmm. like you gotta like no you gotta this all goes with putting things into the universe too mm -hmm. like just whatever so i'm sitting in there i'm on the phone i'm talking to my brother i'm talking to her i can hear the lady no fucking tack whatsoever. But she goes, straps negative. And I'm like, damn, bitch. You know, I'm in the room. You know, why are you yelling at? You know, <laughs> no fucking tack. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, she going to come in here. She going to be on some bullshit. So she comes into the room. You know, she's she's like, so, ma'am, what's going on? I'm, And I'm like, what? She was like, so tell me what's up. I said, well, I'm going to tell you the same shit I told the guy who was just in here. You know, my throat was like a little sore. And, um, you know, and during this time, I'm working. I have, I've been doing a lot of work. Like, uh -huh. There's people in my tribe who know I've been working a lot, uh -huh. whether it's been auditions or writing. Um, you know, I have a two-day event that I'm, that's coming up February 2021 that's, mm -hmm. Huge. Mm -hmm. So I've been planning all this shit. I've been dehydrated. And you're doing a bunch of hosting, too. Yeah, so yeah. it's just been a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, in the middle of that stuff, I knew I was dehydrated because mm -hmm. I know I have signs that tell me when I'm dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So she comes in, what's going on, blah, 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 and I'm telling her, and she goes, okay, well, your strep comes back negative. I'm like, well, yeah, I heard you announce it to the whole entire floor, so, you know, what, you know, you got anything else you'd like to say? So she goes, <laughs> <laughs> she goes, yeah, well, you know, we're we're treating every, you know, we're treating all negative strep as COVID. I said, well, not over my life, you not. Uh -huh. Okay? Yeah. Not over my life. Yeah. I said, is that the only thing that you test for? She said, well, we're going to send out your throat culture to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they'll be able to tell you if it's strep B or C, mm -hmm. you know, if that comes back. But, you know, and then she goes, well, some of the strep tests aren't even accurate. Bitch, you don't need to be doing no medical work. Right. Okay? Thank God 
I know I have a purpose. I'm chosen. I'm aligned. I'm spiritually strong for uh -huh. your bullshit that you're talking right now. Because yeah. no doctor should ever say that. Mm -hmm. So whatever. So they give me the antibiotics. I'm taking the antibiotics. I'm talking to my nurse friend the whole time. You know, but before all of that, before all of this, she was like, okay, you you know, you got to make sure you're taking... um." You know your emergencies because it has zinc in it, and you know I'm also I'm always outside. I'm I, I got vitamin D. She's like, take your vitamin Ds and turmeric, which is a natural inflammatory. Like this is a nurse who will tell you to take a lot of holistic and s holistic stuff before you got to go over the counter. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing all of this stuff, mm -hmm. and, and through the whole process, they call me. They're like, oh, because it came back negative, they made me take a COVID test. Yeah. Because she says we're treating all negative strep as COVID. Jeez. And I'm like, not over my life. And so mm. I talked to my pastor. My pastor's like, good. Good for you for not aligning with that. You don't have to. Al and this is what I want to tell people. You don't have to align with everything somebody tells you. Not even just COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody tell you ain't going to be shit, are you going to believe it or not? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to align with that. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I, I take the medication. I'm listening to my friend. I'm doing all that stuff. Meanwhile, the whole time, and y'all can check my ADT surveillance. I'm praising. I'm outside. You know, I'm dancing. I'm, I'm doing everything. I'm still, I'm still being active. Uh -huh. uh, because what people have to realize, too, is COVID is not a death sentence. Yeah. I think people get so defeated and they're like, oh, my God. Ah. I'm like, no, mentally strong. Uh -huh. This is part of the battle. Mm -hmm. You got to be strong mentally, physically. You got to have a tribe mm -hmm. that speaks life to you, not some bullshit. Mm -hmm. So long story short, culture comes back negative. And so I was like, damn, the culture's come back negative? Here I am. I'm, like, confused. I'm like, should I be happy that the culture is negative? Or uh -huh. like, I, was a little bit, I was a little bit confused, like, honestly. Uh -huh. And I called my friend. I was like, hey, Cheryl. I was like, the culture came back negative. She's like, that's good. I was like, that's good. She was like, yeah, girl. That means nothing growing on your throat. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Meanwhile, I know there's, like, a couple days left that they're going to call me back with my test results. Uh -huh. And I recorded that shit, too. And so the guy, he calls me. He goes, may I speak to Janisha? I'm like, this is her. He was like, okay, um, can you verify? This is Dr. Blah, blah, blah from whatever. He's like, can you verify your date of birth? And he, I'm like, yeah. He's like, good news. And in my head, I'm like, I already fucking knew this shit. Right. I was aligned. Uh -huh. There's a purpose for my life. I'm chosen. I'm mentally strong. My tribe is strong. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I talked to during that period of time mm -hmm. was with me. Mm -hmm. I had my best friends in Tennessee. I swear to God, she stayed on the phone with me probably for about six hours wow. to make sure that I can get the fuck to sleep. Uh -huh. And she was in the middle of work. Yeah. This, this lady, I called her, Cheryl Dumas, the nurse. I called her at 2 o'clock in the morning one time. Mm -hmm. She answered the phone with her husband and her kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. My other friend, Lucretia, I call her 12 at midnight. Like, you got to have people in your tribe. This is a, this is a, a village time right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get people out of your tribe. You're doing a disservice mm -hmm. if you don't have people that speak life and are there. It's lonely for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm not lonely. I was fucking, you know, this is just, okay, throat is a little itchy, da -da, you know, all this shit. People are so depressed right now. Mm -hmm. People are so hurt. People are so lonely. Mm -hmm. And they feel like they don't have nobody they can call on. Now, I'm not going to get my number out over the air, but y'all. <laughs> <laughs> 760. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead and try that if you want. <laughs> but I will tell you this. If there's anybody out there that's lonely mm -hmm. or, like, wants some information or whatever, mm -hmm. find me on Facebook. I do answer my own Facebook messages. Cause, wow. Yeah, I do. So you're, uh, well, actually, because at the end, at the end, we're going to, obviously, people can find your information. So you're actually inviting people to have conversations with you and come to your page and chat with you. All day. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Let me Don't ask come you with no crazy shit, though, because I got discernment. Don't right. forget that. Right. Yeah. And but boundaries. Absolutely. Let me ask you this, because I, we could do this all day, but I'm, I'm nervous because we're running out of time. But I want to get a few good nuggets from you before okay. we say goodbye. So earlier when we spoke, A, you mentioned that you wanted to tell a story. You may have already told that, that was story. was it. Oh, perfect. That was it. Okay. Yes. So let me ask you this. Is there something that, anything you want to add? Is there anything that you, like a message to the listeners or viewers, anything that you want to contribute? 
Yeah, I really want people to understand that you never allow anyone to deter you from your dreams, your aspirations, and your goals. Mm -hmm. Period. I think that's so important. Yeah. Because that is literally like your lifeline. If you allow somebody to deter you and, and go south for something that you were so focused on and so determined to do, mm -hmm. you just kind of, I mean, you're, you're setting yourself up to never recover. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people need to hear that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got people in your circle that aren't speaking life, you're doing yourself a disservice, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard. I think people make so many excuses. Uh, I don't, I think it has a lot to do with the way I was raised, but you know, stop making excuses for shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. Well, shit, tomorrow ain't promised. Mm -hmm. Go to the goddamn cemetery. You'll see those people didn't see the tomorrow. Look mm -hmm. at their end date. Mm -hmm. You know, stop putting shit off. Oh, you scared. What you scared for? Mm -hmm. What you scared for? You worried about what somebody else think? Why? They don't even buy you a banana. Mm -hmm. You know, if you keep calling people, they're not answering your phone. They don't want to talk to you. Period. Mm -hmm. Accept it. Move the fuck on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you calling people, calling. They won't answer. They want. They don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Find somebody else. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I, what I like about it is it, it goes back to the beginning of the conversation. And I like the banana. It's true. It's like these people aren't these people aren't putting food on your table. So if they're not, if they're toxic, if they're, if they're not adding to you and they're not benefiting you, then let them go. Let them go. Let me ask you this. So before we say goodbye, and again, I'm going to get you back because we, you and I could do this for obviously hours, right? Yeah. Um, we always ask guests as far as solutions are concerned. And I don't yeah. know if you have something that you can kind of give to the listeners or viewers. But what if you had a solution, give, give some people some tangible examples of things that they can do to just do better. What would you say to that? What would those be? Things to do better. Um... Well, one thing is, because I think when you're better, then everybody else is better. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that going postal syndrome. Like, if you showing up to a job every day you don't like, mm -hmm. at some point, you about to just go off. Yeah. You throwing pins and staplers all over the place. Mm -hmm. So, I think what you can do is really evaluate what it is that you want to do. What makes you happy? What is it that you would do that you wouldn't get paid for? I think a lot of people get what's caught up in, yeah. yeah, exactly. What's your passion? What's mm -hmm. your passion? Figure out what your purpose is because mm -hmm. everyone that knows me knows I am not ma motivated by the money. Mm -hmm. Never have been, mm -hmm. was never raised that way because I know when I'm operating in my purpose and my passion, mm -hmm. it will come. People mm -hmm. are going to pay me to do what I'm good at because it's my passion, my purpose. Um, so I think if you eliminate the money and focus on what it is that you want to do that keeps you happy and keeps you driven, you're going to be happy. And then you're going to make everybody around you happy. And then you're going to leave a happy foot footprint mm -hmm. on this planet. Yeah. Which is the goal. It should be the goal. Let yeah. me ask you this. So, Find out what makes you happy. Find your passion and purpose and uh, eliminate the, ac the, the aspect of money. I like that. And I kind of operate the same way. The money will come. Don't worry about it that. It will come. So when you talk about passion and purpose, can we think of, and this is a tough question to ask, but is there like maybe a couple of exercises that people can take or step into to learn what their passions or, or purpose might be if they don't know? That's a good question. That's tough, right? I know it's tough. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I think I think it's easier for them to figure out what the hell they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't you know you don't like going into that room or to that office making copies for that dude that yeah. you can't respect. Yeah. So what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I mean, it might start with figuring out what it is you don't like to do. I think we I think that's the answer is like really look at what you're doing and is it making you happy? And if not, that's where this change right. begins. Stop doing shit you don't like to do. Unless you're doing it and you know that there's a, you know, a, a path. It's you almost know. like the sacrifice and reward. Exactly. Uh -huh. I got it. I'm glad you, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you came. Thank today. you. You're yes. welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I was, I was juice when you reached out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And listen, we're going to get you back. So. With that said, folks, you guys know how what we do. When you uh, check this page, you're going to see some links uh, to Janisha's uh, Facebook as well as yeah. Instagram. Anything else that she's going to share with us. So I like you're one of the first and only people that have invited people to come to her page and uh, create some dialogue. So I challenge everybody to do that. And um, Yeah, if you need somebody to, you know, again, y'all be smart now because I'm very blunt. I would be like, <laughs> get the fuck. Don't, don't contact me. You'll get blocked. Come correct. Come correct. 
Correct. Come correct. Because my discernment is on. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I love you. And I'm so glad you're here. Thank you again. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yay. She'll be back. And uh, you guys know uh, how we do. You heard some solutions. You heard some great stuff here today. Share this and uh, take care of yourselves and each other. We love you. And that's a wrap. We'll see you soon.